Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of College Hockey Talk. On today's podcast, I'm joined by a freshman from the Providence women's hockey team, Ashlyn Garnett. Uh, welcome to the po- podcast, Ashlyn, and how's everything going? Thank you. Everything's going good. I'm happy to be back on campus. Yeah, and how was your holiday break? Did you do anything interesting or just kind of relax for a little bit? Honestly, just kind of relaxed. Didn't do much at all. That's good, though. It's good to take a break from hockey and just kind of take, just kind of relax, I guess, if that's the right word to use. Yeah, for sure. Now, it's hard to believe that you just finished the first half of your freshman season. So my question to you is, uh, what have you taken away from the games you've played so far? And how would you evaluate your team's performance as of now? Yeah, the first half flew by, to be completely honest with you. Um, I think our team has been doing pretty well, and we've played and beat some really good teams. Um, I think our second half moving forward is going to be even better. Um, We learned a lot from the first half, um, so I'm super excited. And what are your goals and expectations um, for the second half of the season? Like, How is your team trying to approach the games you have left on the schedule? Mm -hmm. So we have three games this week. So right now our focus is just winning those three games and putting um, ourselves in a good position for the second half. Um, And obviously then we have Hockey East tournament and then obviously we want to win the whole Mm -hmm. thing. So that's the plan. And just talk about what it's like playing in Hockey East and just the competition you face every night. Yeah, I love playing Hockey East. Um, obviously it's a very good competition. Um, and at the same time, I have some friends and old teammates in the league. So it's like super fun to play against them and compete at the highest level. Now, what's been the biggest improvement you've made to your game so far this year? Has it been kind of the, I guess, the mental side of the game, making quick decisions with the puck, or has it been another part of your game that you've been working on throughout the off season that you've noticed improvements uh, to it as of now? Um, I think for me, it is the more mental side of it. Um, Obviously, it's quicker than what I was used to coming in. So for me, it's just making quicker decisions and knowing kind of when to hold on to the puck and when to get rid of it faster. So I've been working on that. Um, And it got better as it went on. But that's like the biggest difference for me, I think. And what's been the biggest adjustment you've had to make uh, to your game this year? Again, I think just doing everything at a quicker speed. Um, I'm used, I was used to holding on to the puck much longer and having more space and time. But um, when you move up and play against better and older girls, you're not going to have that time anymore. So I just kind of figuring that out. And you've got your first collegiate goal against Brown this year. Um, I want to ask you, what was it like in that goal? And who was the first person you called after it was scored? Yeah, I was super excited. I was getting kind of frustrated because I went a lot of games without scoring and everyone was like, it'll come, it'll come. Um, But when it did, I was super happy and all my teammates were awesome about it. Um, I called my parents. They were watching the game. So it was was pretty cool and hopefully more to come. And uh, where do you keep the puck today? Is it in your dorm room or did you bring it back to your house? Actually, our equipment manager took it, so I don't know what he's doing with that or if he collects them and gives it out after. I'm not quite sure, but I don't have it as of now. But yeah. Well, hopefully he gives it to you after the season at least. I think yeah. <laughs> that'll be a cool surprise um, once the season's over. Yeah, for sure. Now, another thing that happened during this first half of the season regarding your team's um, performance is you beat two great opponents in Northeastern and Boston College. I just have to ask how important were those wins? Uh, not just for your team's confidence heading into the first half of the season, but also just two big wins in your conference as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, obviously those um, wins were huge. Um, Again, any wins in the first half are going to do big things because it can set you up really well, but especially taking points from those two teams – Um, can make a huge difference in the standings and as well giving us the confidence and knowing that we can play and beat any team in our conference is huge. And your team has a few freshmen on the team this year. So my question is just talk about your freshman class and how have you guys gotten to know each other uh, since you guys arrived on campus? Yeah, so we have six freshmen. um, 
and we've gotten really close just because the freshmen live in one dorm and then the whole rest of the team is in a different one so we're together a lot um we're there's some like we all live from super different places I know I'm from Nova Scotia there's a few girls from there's one from actually Rhode Island and then there's Texas um Minnesota and California so like we're kind of from way different places but I think that's good and we've we've made some good connections and I'm excited to have three more years with them. Now I kind of want to transition to your offseason a little bit and talk about how you prepared for college hockey this year so how was your offseason this past summer did you do anything interesting whether it was hockey related or non-hockey related? Yeah so um I had an extremely long off season to say the least. Um, my season before coming to Providence was completely canceled. Um, so I didn't play games that entire season. So for me, it was just trying to um, improve off the ice as much as possible, stay fit, um, but also um, try to find ways to improve on the ice when I don't have those resources. Um, so just shooting pucks, um, at-home workouts, training with friends, just to like keep myself in it. Um, and then also this summer, um, I worked and trained. So like it was, it was a nice break from hockey, but it made me want to play even more. Yeah, and I guess like how did you handle the cancellation of your season? Like what did you do, I guess, training-wise um, during that time that would have normally been your hockey season last year? Yeah, so for the first um, half of the year, I was in Ontario um, with Kingston um, in the PWHL, and we were practicing a lot, and we were on the ice a bunch, but we just couldn't play. So I definitely um, felt like I improved being there and practicing a lot, but when I came home for Christmas, um, everything got shut down, so I wasn't able to go back. Um, and at home, none of the rinks or gyms were open for a while. So, again, just, like, making the most of it, like, at-home workouts, kind of just watching hockey, anything I really could do. And how are those at-home workouts? Just because, you know, <laughs> you're not using a lot of weights. You're kind of using a lot of bands, is from what I was told. Is there any advantage, I guess, doing at-home workouts versus being in the gym? Um, I think there can be. Um, I think – for me, at least, I would just focus more on my form and truly, like, doing it right. Because if you don't do it, you're not going to feel it. So more reps. Um, yeah, just doing everything. Now, did, did ice like, open up back up as the summer went on, or was it pretty much restricted until you got to Providence? Yeah, I started opening back up. I was on the ice in the summer. Um, so that was good. I was on the ice, like, three times a week. Um, which was super good before coming to college so I could get the rest off. Um, yeah, so I was able to go back on ice before I came. And how did your approach, I guess, change when those things started opening back up? Um, just like trying to prepare for the season, like did your approach change at all or was it kind of just doing what you were normally doing um, when things weren't open? Yeah, I think for me, I thought of it as um, – I had the chance to be back on the ice now. Um, I had to get some of my confidence back and just like feel, um, get back to where I was because I knew a lot of girls going in were able to play full seasons and were able to be on the ice a lot more. So I was just doing everything I could to get back to where I was. Now, obviously working during the summer as well as training for hockey, did that help kind of teach you how to balance both academics and hockey? Because that's like a big adjustment. I feel like a lot of freshmen have to make um, when they, once they get to college. Yeah, for sure. My summer was actually super busy. I worked full time um, teaching little kids to paddle, which was draining, <laughs> but it was actually really good. And I kept my mind away from hockey um, all the time. So it was really good. I think it was a good experience for sure. And how have you learned to balance both school and hockey in college so far this year? Yeah, um, I think I, I'm fortunate enough I've gotten to prep school 
and I've also lived away from home. So I've had to balance hockey and school for quite a long time. And I thought I was prepared and I, I was, but college was a big adjustment for me. Um, I think just because the hockey took up more time than I was used to. And there was a lot of, um, there's a lot of expectations you have to meet. Um, so I think having teammates around and other resources really helped me just to like balance it quickly and not get behind. Now segueing, I want to talk about the beginning of your hockey career and kind of work all the way up to where you are now with Providence. Uh, so you're from Nova Scotia. Um, just talk about growing up there and how did you start playing hockey? Yeah, so um, I think I just wanted to play because my older brother played the classic. Everyone in the family liked hockey, so I liked hockey. Um, I played guys hockey growing up, and I played until I went away for school. So, yeah. And who was your favorite player growing up? Was it Cindy Crosby, since he's like obviously an icon um, in Nova Scotia, or was it a female player on the national team? Um, I obviously love Sydney just because he's from like five minutes from my hometown. But my favorite player was Rebecca Johnson. She's plays on the Canadian national team. She still does. So that was like who I looked up to the most. What about uh, Rebecca Johnson's game? Did you like the most, I guess? Um, she was a wing. She's a winger. Um, she just does like the little things, but always is making a difference. So I I loved playing, I mean, playing with her, watching her. Um, and I got the chance to meet her and like do a camp with her. So she was also a great person as well. So, yeah. Yeah, talk about meeting her. That must have been, were you nervous, I guess, meeting one of your favorite hockey players? Um, I was super was it, nervous. Yeah, just talk about that experience, I guess. Yeah, um, I was super young at the time. So I was just soaking everything I could on and off the ice and um, as I get older now I can um, talk to those players and like not be as nervous and understand more now where they were coming from which is pretty cool. Now did you have the chance to meet Sidney Crosby since he lives five minutes away from your hometown or that hasn't happened yet? I have not actually met him. Tons of my friends have, my brother has, but I haven't Oh, that's disappointing. Hopefully you get that chance sooner rather than later. Yes. Now, before Providence, um, where did you play um, in prep? Where did you play for prep school? Where did you play for junior teams? Like, um, or just talk about the teams that you played for before college hockey. Yeah, so I kind of had a complicated – I've played in a lot of different places. So um, in my grade 8 year um, is when I first moved away from home. And I went to RNS, which is in New Brunswick, Canada. Um, it's a small prep school where I played my grade eight, nine, and 10 year. Um, and then after my grade 10 year, um, I felt as I wanted to a change and just another challenge just because I was at RNS for a while. Um, so I went to St. Paul's um, in New Hampshire. And then when I was going to St. Paul's, I also played for the Boston Junior Eagles as a club team. Um, and then for my grade 12 year, I decided to go back to Canada and play in the PWHL for Kingston. And then that season was cut short. And then now I'm at Providence. <laughs> so I've kind of been all over. But Yeah. And was it hard moving from home at such a young age? And how did you handle that? Mm -hmm. It was for sure. Um, but as I said, RNS was a super small school and the community was amazing there. So um, I, fe I felt at home pretty quick, which made it like much easier for sure. Now talk about your experience with St. Um, John's and also with the Boston Junior Eagles and what's the best memory you have um, with those two teams? Yeah. Um, I mean, I was only there for one year. So um, I think the biggest takeaway from playing in the States and St. Paul's and um, Boston Junior Eagles is just like the people I've met because tons of those girls, especially on Junior Eagles, um, I get to play against now. A lot of them play in Hockey East. So um, 
that's what I've taken away the most just because it's fun when I get to play against them, little teammates. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And do you have like a favorite memory with St. Paul's or with the Junior Eagles, or is it kind of just like playing with those players that you play against now in Hockey East? Yeah, I, the year I played with Junior Eagles, um, Nationals got canceled, so we weren't able to go. Um, so that would have been pretty cool. But we won our like regional tournament, which is pretty cool. But yeah, I think just like meeting the players and now getting to play against them is my favorite. Now, how did your experience with St. Paul's um, with the Boston Junior Eagles with Kingston and with um, the t team you played with in Nova Scotia help prepare you for college hockey with Providence? Yeah, I think um, each team and each place um, helped me in different ways. Um, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to like play for all those teams. And um, I think if it wasn't for those programs, I wouldn't have been able to play at Providence or have the skills to um, manage um, school and hockey at the same time. So um, especially moving from team to team, I had to adapt quickly and learn new things quickly, which I think has helped me in my transition to college. So, yeah. Now talk about your recruitment process to Providence. What was that like for yourself? What made you want to go to that school versus other ones you might've looked at? Mm -hmm. I was at RNS when I committed to Providence. So I was pretty young. Um, the recruitment process was really fun and definitely stressful for me. Um, but yeah, it, since I was kind of playing in Canada at the time, um, the recruitment process was challenging just because I felt as I wasn't getting as much exposure as some girls who were playing in the States. But um, we got to play in the States in some tournaments and showcases. So that's when I got to like um, be exposed to the colleges in the States. And once I started touring them and talking to coaches, I just like fell in love with Providence. And that's when I chose. Now, something that was introduced to college hockey this year um, was three and three overtime. And I just want to ask you from your perspective, um, what's it like being a player in those three and three overtime situations? Because as a fan, they're fun to watch, but I just kind of want to get your perspective on it as a college hockey athlete. Mm -hmm. um, I personally like the three on three overtime. Like you said, it's definitely fun to watch and it's fun to play in just because there's not a lot of room for air. So you have to definitely um, be careful, but you have to take some risks. Um, we've actually had tons of games this in the first half that have gone to overtime. So we've done it like I think five or six times, um, but it's definitely adds excitement to the game as a player as well. Now, um, what have you taken away, I guess, from your hockey experience at Providence so far when you look back on it now? And what do you hope to gain, I guess, for experience-wise? Like, what do you hope, what, do you look, what are you looking forward to the most stuff for the rest of this season, but also for your next three years as well? Yeah, I think for me, I've taken a lot um, from the older girls on my team and also older girls on other teams, um, just like watching them and seeing what they do and what works for them. Um, because for me, um, obviously I have my own things and things that have worked for me in the past, but some of those things um, I can't do at this level. So seeing and um, absorbing um, the top players in the league is something I wanna continue to do so I can produce at the top level as well. Who's one older player on your team that you look up to a lot and try to model your game after? Um, there's a lot for for different things, I think. Um, some, I take their leadership and um, their energy, and some is like pure skill. And so I think it's different for each player, but I take something from almost everyone on my team for sure. So we're now in a segment I like to call the non-hockey segment or ask you some non-hockey mm -hmm. questions just to get to know you a little bit more off the ice. So mm -hmm. my first question to you is, what is the most interesting thing you've seen or read this week? Um, 
haven't been reading much, but probably just about like the World Juniors. They just got canceled, um, and all the stuff about them canceling the women's and what's going on in the world, in the hockey world, and COVID's impact is probably the thing that I've mm -hmm. read about the most. Yeah, what's your thoughts on all those cancellations? Just because it seems like they didn't really handle it that well from both ends. No, not at all. I think, obviously, it's super upsetting. I feel bad for the players and the organizations just because a lot of work and time goes into that, and it's their dreams, and take, getting that taken from you is definitely heartbreaking. Now, how do you, I guess this is somewhat of a hockey question, but do you, how do you think COVID's going to impact the second half of your season in college hockey? Because I feel like you've seen some impacts from different teams, but I guess how are you trying to manage that as well? Yeah, so we were super fortunate that we haven't had any um, impacts from COVID the first half, but since coming back to campus, it's definitely been a challenge and there's – some girls testing positive and I know not just on our team but other teams as well so hopefully it gets under control before games start going and everyone's safe and nothing gets canceled so we can finish our season so that's the hope. Now back to some hockey or non-hockey questions is first one is what music do you like to listen to um, before a game or just on a general basis? Mm, I like a whole bunch of music i love country music um i like like throwbacks but i don't know i don't really have a particular type of music i kind of like it all now what is your biggest pet peeve um i hate when people don't turn their blinker off after they turned <laughs> oh yeah that's a good one or um, I don't know if this is normal, but my brothers do it. They like put the empty juice container back in the fridge. That's typical in my household. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if it's anything else, but yeah, those are a few. No, the problem that I have is with cereal. Like if it's almost empty, I'll put it yes. back in the pantry, but not for juice though, mostly for cereal. I don't know why I do that, but maybe it's a guy thing. I'm not sure. Maybe. I'm not sure either. Now, if there was a movie made about your life, who would you want to play yourself and why? Um, I don't know if I had to choose probably just one of my closest friends, um, because they would know me best and know how I would react the most, but I'm not sure. Now, speaking of your teammates, um, who has, who is the funniest on the Providence women's hockey team? Um, we have a lot of characters on our team, but if it, if I had to choose a few, I would definitely choose um, Sierra um, Barnum and Delaney Kucher. They're really, really funny. Um, yeah, I would probably go to their heads, but mm -hmm. they're so funny. What are some of the things that they do? They don't even do anything. It's just they're super quick on their feet, like to think of something. I don't even know how to explain it, but they can always make you laugh. Now, kind of going off that next question, but um, who has the best um, chirps on the team? Probably Sierra again, and also Hunter Barnett. She loves to chirp. Like, I swear, it's her favorite thing. Forget now, the who, game. She wants to chirp people. <laughs> Does she chirp you guys or just the other team? No, just the other team. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Now, who, is, who has the best style on the team besides yourself? Hmm. I'd either go with Maddie Queen. Um, she always loves to dress up. Um, and then Lily Martinson, she's a freshman. Um, she brings her own type of style, to say the least. She loves her cowboy boots. Mm -hmm. So I'd say her as well. I'm assuming she's the freshman from Texas. If she's yes. Pretty cool. So that's pretty cool. Yes. And then last non-hockey question is, what is your favorite movie or TV show to watch right now? Um, honestly, I'm not watching too much right now. Um, 
Canadian Netflix is so much better than American Netflix. So every time I come back to the States, I have to find something new because they don't have the shows I'm watching. But um, my all time favorite show is probably Suits. I don't mm -hmm. think that's on American Netflix right now. But yeah, it's my favorite. Well, I watched this one Canadian show called Mr. D. I thought that was pretty funny. I don't know if you've ever heard of it before. Yeah, I have heard of it. My friend was in that show, actually. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. No, it's pretty funny. I didn't know. Apparently, it's a Canadian show, so that's why I had to ask you because I've I've been mm -hmm. I think I've been watching some episodes from that. But no, mine's probably um, probably like The Office or something like super basic. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. I don't really watch too much TV though. It's mostly sports. Yeah, fair. Now back to some hockey questions. Now, what should be done to help grow women's hockey, in your opinion, um, especially with the U18 Women's World Championships being canceled? Yep. Um, in my opinion. I think it just needs to be broadcasted more. I think they don't get the time of day for people to even watch it. Like if it was on TV more, um, people would watch it more. I think that's what it comes down to. Um, they say that the women's tournaments don't have many viewers, but it's because you have to go through like three different websites to find the game, mm -hmm. like if it's TV and accessible to people then more people would watch it now what advice would you give a younger player who's listening to this podcast on what it takes to make it to the d1 college hockey level yeah i'd say um don't be afraid to reach out to older girls um either playing college or have played college like in your hometown um, especially to girls that don't get as much exposure as others um if you reach out to older girls, you, they could always talk to your their coaches. Um, so yeah, I think use your resources. Um, also, don't let the recruitment process like let it be fun and have fun with it, and don't get overly stressed um, and enjoy it while you can. Well, do you have any shout outs you'd like to give uh, to any of your family members, friends, um, or teammates that might be listening to this podcast? Um, yeah, of course, my family um, wouldn't be here or anywhere near here without them. Um, and all my teammates I made from all my different teams and at Providence um, always have a special place in my heart. And same with all my friends back home. Well, thank you so much, Ashlyn, for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Um, I wish you nothing but the best for the second half of the season. I know you're going to do great. And um, no, thank you so much for coming on. Take care and stay safe and enjoy the new year as well. All right. Thank you very much. Now, one